Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. Thank you so much for joining me once again for tea time. Today, we have just misty morning. Really, really good, refreshing, really good in the morning. It just gives me that little bit of pick me up, I guess. So once again, it is an early day today because I have a lot of things to work on. I have a bunch of projects going on. Thank God, right guys? It's been really busy. So anyways, today is going to be an Adobe day. You know how much I love Adobe, right? So I'm the guy that created the life after Adobe, cutting the cord, whole movement that went on. Like, God, it's gotta be a year now that I took all Adobe software off every single machine in the studio. Anyways, I would be remiss not to tell you about the June update to their Adobe Cloud service. So that's what we want to do today. But before I get into it, I want to say, if you haven't picked up my ebook, pick it up over at jchristina.com forward slash ebook. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash ebook. You got to pick it up. I'll tell you why. So it doesn't matter if you're an amateur or a professional in this ebook. 10 tips of making sharper images. There's something basically for everyone in there. Go check it out. Once again, it is free. jchristina.com forward slash ebook. Go grab it. Anyways, today, like I said, is an Adobe day. Now, if any of you want to go and check out any of my Life After Adobe Cutting the Cord series, you can do that. If you want to support the channel, you can buy some merch. I have some Life After Adobe <laughs> Cutting the Cord merch also, along with some other designs that I've created. So check those out also. So today, June update, Creative Cloud. Now, let's start out with Photoshop. A lot of people use Photoshop. That's probably the number one piece of software that Adobe has created since day one, or I should say the most used. So Photoshop is very, very important to many folks that are out there that are not using alternatives like we are. Now, Photoshop has received a update when it comes to subject selection. They needed to do this many, many moons ago, but they've finally done it. And I would have to say, according to the videos that I've seen of it doing its subject selection, is doing a pretty good job at it. I would have to say probably on par to Affinity Photo. I would say they're kind of equal at this point. I would give it to Affinity in certain situations, Adobe and others. So I would say they're on par, which is good. It is good no matter how you look at it. Now, what they've done is they are obviously using their Sensei AI machine learning technology. But what they're doing is they're honing in to subjects. So they're probably using it to find eyeballs or whatever it is. And when they see a portrait or a subject, a head, let's say, they're now going to view it as a head with hair. And then it gets very fine tuned to hair. And they show an image, as you can see here, where it really is able to capture all of those little fine hairs, unlike the way it did way back in 2019, which I say way back, but it's not really that long ago. It's a year ago. Now, they also added rotatable patterns, which is good. And even more importantly is the Adobe fonts auto activation. How many times have you guys received the message? Sorry, that font is missing. Go find it for yourself or oh, whatever it is. That happens to me all the time because I've been doing this for 15 plus years. And even though for many years I was using Adobe fonts, I would also use other fonts, maybe free fonts that we find at DaFonts or wherever, okay? And we would use those. And if they're no longer on a machine that we're trying to edit this older file on, it's like, hey, sorry, that font doesn't exist. Do you want me to use Arial? No, don't use Arial. It doesn't even look like what I'm trying to do here. It doesn't even come close. The font doesn't come close. Well, now they have like an algorithm built in that will either download the font that you need that's missing, or if it can't, it does this match font feature thing so that it takes a look at the font and now tries to best match it with a different font if you can't find the same one. And I think that's really cool. That is one of the best features that I've seen so far because it's been a pain in the neck 
ever since I could remember. So this is something that a lot of people have been asking for over the years, not months or days, years, and they finally implemented it, which is great. Now, next comes Lightroom. There's only a couple of things that are interesting in Lightroom. To me, at least, they have, number one, they introduced local hue adjustments, raw defaults, ISO adaptive presets, and center crop overlay. So what exactly is this? Starting out with the center crop overlay, basically it will crop in, it will find the subject in the center, and then it will crop. Now, who wants a subject dead center? I don't know, but if you do, this will do it for you automatically. So I guess that's cool. Also with the local hue adjustments, it allows you to edit colors in a selected area. So instead of doing color edits that are global throughout the entire image, you can go into a certain area and then change those colors. So that's kind of cool. Also with raw defaults, that now allows you to set up as images are brought in raw, a specific default, like a LUT, let's call it. So when you bring that image in, it looks very much so as you saw it on the back of the camera. So you can set this up. So it is a default on load in, let's call it. Also with ISO adaptive presets, basically it allows you to dial in a preset specific to the ISO that it's captured at. So if something is captured at something extremely high at 6,400, 12,000 ISO, it will now change the preset according to that ISO. Same thing as if you brought it in at 100 ISO. This way you can kind of dial things in. You know if you're getting something at 12,800 ISO, there's gonna be a lot more noise, there might be some fluctuation in color. You can make these presets so that as you bring them in, it automatically makes those changes. Also in Lightroom CC, it now allows you to make multiple edits to an image without having to make duplicates of that file. Now also Lightroom CC on the iPad or Mac OS or Windows or iOS or Android or whatever also got center crop overlay as well as watermarks. Watermarks is one of those things that is mission critical. And any editor out there that doesn't allow you to place a watermark on your image is just not worth its weight in salt, okay? It just needs to go. All right, so having watermarks in there, I don't care about the center crop overlay nonsense because you would never, I would never use that. Um, but watermarks is extremely, extremely important. Now also what it allows you to do is be able to round trip things if you need to. So what that means is you could bring an image into Lightroom and then send it over to Photoshop or take that image from Photoshop and send it back into Lightroom, which to me is really cool. They needed to do this once again a long time ago, and now they did it, thank God. So now we have this capability, which is great. Now, as far as Lightroom Classic changes go, a lot of you I'm sure are using Lightroom Classic, and we know that it gets very lethargic and bogged down when it comes to a lot of things going on, or there's a large database that it's dealing with, or whatever. What they've said is they made major improvements in performance. Now that is exceptional, we need that. And the performance is all like GPU acceleration based. So supposedly it's going to move quicker in between images. It's going to scroll smoother. It's not so choppy and jittering that we've had. Also searching as well as filter collections and scrubbing and all that should be a lot smoother according to what they're saying. I have not tested it. Obviously I don't use their software anymore, but please guys report back. Anything in here that I've gotten wrong, let me know very, very important. And also include in the comment area your experiences with this software, since I'm not using it anymore, okay? Also, we have a couple of changes with Camera Raw. Now the Camera Raw, or the ACR software, is now looking more and more like the interface we would see on Lightroom or on Photoshop, okay? And that makes sense. We wanna keep continuity with software packages. It just, that's the way it should be. Why they don't do that, I don't know. I've always said, the UI in some of these software packages that they've put together over the years is just horrendous, horrendous at best. But we don't wanna get into that today. So basically what they did is they moved a lot of your tools on the right-hand side to just 
make it neater and you can access it all with your right hand thumb or whatever. So they've made that change. Not too much else happened with ACR. Obviously new cameras have been added and whatnot. I'm not gonna go into all the new cameras, but as you know, Adobe and Adobe Raw, Adobe Camera Raw, whatever, they're constantly adding new cameras as the new cameras come out. So anyways, guys, that is the update for June. Now, once again, if you are not into Adobe, like I'm not, I don't feel the need to pay at nauseam for leasing software or renting software in perpetuity and just constantly chichanging. Is that a word, chichanging? Yeah, I guess. Throwing that money down every single month, like I said, forever at nauseam. I don't like doing that, so we moved all of our systems and deleted all Adobe software off it. Now, I did that about a year ago, and once again, you can take a look at, I don't know, maybe I'll put something here or a card or whatever, or you could just go to the channel. There's like 360, 400 videos or whatever. Just type in Life After Adobe Cutting the Cord. That's it. You'll find the playlist. There's, I don't know how many, 20 videos, let's say, in there. And I break down alternatives to each one of the packages. So it could be Adobe Illustrator, Premiere, Photoshop, Lightroom, After Effects, whatever. They're all there. And I give a breakdown of a whole bunch of alternatives that are either free or paid, but I just shy away from any alternative that also makes you pay a rental fee, a licensing charge every single month. I want software that you can buy, you own it, and then you decide if you want to update it or not. Not them, all right? So that's the way I look at things. It's up to you guys. Like I said, if you want to break free from Adobe, check that out, Life After Adobe, cutting the cord. Anyways, in the comment area, Put your comments, where I got things right, where I got them wrong, your experiences, everything. Stick them down there. Let's have a discussion. Let me know what you think about these additions or changes. Are they fantastic? Are they wow? To me, the best thing that they've added was the means of really getting that hair cut out, making those masks um, tight with their Sensei AI engine, okay, where it determines that there's a portrait in the image links into the eyes and then follows the hairline and really gets granular when it comes to hair. That is fantastic to me. Now, does it work with animals just like it does with people? I don't know. According to what they said, it said portraits. Well, is it am animal portraiture or is it just people portraits? I don't know. I know cameras these days have like animal mode or whatever, whereas it actually detects where it's taking a picture of an animal, a dog, a cat, or whatever, and does that eye tracking. So chances are their sensei, AI, whatever, engine can probably do the same thing. I don't know. You let me know. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this content. If you got even a little bit out of it this much, please throw it a big thumbs up. That would be stellar. That helps me. It helps the channel. It helps everything. Please throw it a thumbs up. Also, smash that subscribe button so you can get all of my content when it becomes available and click the bell icon somewhere right around here. So when it is available, you will be notified of it. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That would be awesome. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for the end of the vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe and stay healthy.